Hello, my friends, and welcome to, well, in Europe, it's called I-War, but here in America, it's called Independence War. This game is uh, one of my favorite uh, space sims of all time, and I've been waiting a long time to do this. I figured since it's Independence Day week here in America, uh, I figured why not do Independence War, the first one. Uh, I haven't really covered the first one. The reason uh, is because I, it, it's when it's full screen. GOG includes the GOG version is fantastic because it includes a glide wrapper that lets it run full screen, 1080, gorgeous, right? But on uh, open broadcaster software here, which captures all that, stuttery as fuck. So I had to figure out a way around that. So what I did was. Uh, we're going to run the intro in a moment, and uh, we're going to do six entries of this because the intro is 15 minutes long just by itself, but it's the best intro in the world, as you will see. And then we're going to do some training missions, but we're going to run the game in a window, so it's going to be tiny for me, but it's going to look great and, and be fluid for y'all. Uh, so let's start with what I think is, even though Free Space 2 is my favorite game, this is my favorite intro. So I'm not going to talk much, if at all, during this intro. And I apologize, it's a little dark. I uh, can't I can't figure out how to make it brighter. But there is a version on YouTube that I'll link in the show notes here that uh, looks a little better if you want to watch it outside of this. So here we go. Computer, take a memo to Admiral Henson, Navy Headquarters, for FTL transmission. Ma'am, this is Clay on the Dreadnought. We have spent the last week on patrol in this cluster, and up to this point we have seen no evidence of the unidentified shipping you described in your report. Furthermore, I must register Sir, my... we're getting a coded transmission on a secure channel. It's the Harvard. She's under attack. Looks like she's encountered a small indie fleet. Signal the Harvard. We're on our way. Damn! Attention, enemy shipping. This is Captain Mishima of the Commonwealth vessel Harvard. This is your final warning. Emergency power coming on stream now, sir. Good. Status. Message coming in, sir. This is Quartermaster Macduff of the Independent Vessel Indecent Proposal. You will surrender your vessel to us. Your ship has been commandeered by the Independent Navy. Offer no resistance and no one will be harmed. Go to hell. All hands, now hear this. To prevent this ship falling to the enemy, we are scuttling her. Prepare for emergency evacuation. All hands, evac station. That would be a very dangerous move, Captain Mishima. Are you absolutely sure you wouldn't like to reconsider? What's their position? Ten million kilometers in closing. They're right by the Lagrange point. Two ships moving in to intercept us. Okay, gunner, missile slow mode, target on bogey A, launch on my mark. Mark. Helm, ready with 180 pitch. Now! Fire! Second Indy coming about. Now. Status on the Harvard? The Harvard and the Indies have gone. I think they've taken her. The Admiralty's not going to be happy about this. Worsening conditions in Bangladesh are proving too much for government aid operatives as the oceanic rise continues. As Governor Ledbetter was making the announcement, All right. the power outage is in the enough. downtown area. Commander Briscoe, wouldn't you say that the latest loss of a Navy ship to the pirates I represents said. extreme incompetence? 
Vengeance on behalf of the Navy. <laughs> Where is she? Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I want to apologize for Admiral Hansen's absence. She got caught in a power outage coming down from the orbital. And of course, the storm made... Does anyone else here find it surprising that a woman with more than 3,000 spaceships at her disposal should find it so difficult getting to a meeting on time? <laughs> I'll get right to it. These figures are not pleasant reading. Successful piracy attacks are going through the roof. We've lost 10 shipments of neutronium headed for Earth this week alone. We've also lost four Navy vessels in the last month. One destroyed and three captured by the Indies. Frankly, our current attempts to contain the situation are failing. Thank you, Admiral Brett. Any responses? If the press get to hear of this, with all respect, to hell with the press, John. Just in a zone, we have four billion to feed. We need those shipments. If we can only trim the military budget. What? And have the Indies walk all over us some more? We're not dealing with some band of gun-happy pirates. We've been fighting a guerrilla war out there for the, the last 50 years. If we need to do anything, we need to strengthen the fleet. I am adjourning this meeting. I think we all need to look at this data a little more closely. Meeting adjourned. Oh, Admiral Brett? Yes, Mr. President? I'd like a word. to blow the ship, but when he looked up and saw that cannon, he realized he was looking death itself right in the eye, and he had a sudden change of heart. <laughs> Come on, let's go take a look at her. Aye, she's going to be a very useful ship, and she'll be ready in time for the assault. As long as our mysterious friends keep their part of the bargain and deliver the spider. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? And so much nicer for a spot of color. Since Admiral Hansen will not be joining us, I thought you might be interested in this report. If our sources are correct, the Indies are planning their most significant attack in years. They have selected a target which would hurt us immeasurably. Which is? The Toleman jump point at Alpha Centauri. They plan to block the most strategically vital junction point in known space. Block it? How? I'll... I'll recall the fleet. We can... No. If we send in the fleet, there won't be an attack. We'll just lose our informants. No, this needs something, someone special. Someone we can use without raising suspicion. I'll get on to it. We can have the most decorated officers in known space. Listen, and listen well, my friend. We don't need decorated. We don't need senior, well-educated, or well-connected. 
This is a war. What we need are results. Now, tell me, which serving officer has had the most kills? Hmm. I'll just... Clay Jefferson H. Captain Dreadnought CNV-301. Kill total 151. Confirmed. Jefferson Clay, eh? Send him on a patrol mission to the Toleman Jump Point. Can we trust him? He has a reputation as a dangerous man. Good. We need a dangerous man. Okay, people, listen up. I know this mission was at short notice, so let's all be careful, okay? Let's see what treats we have in store for today. Captain, a serious situation is developing. You should get underway at once. As you are well aware, since the discovery of the capsule drive, all interstellar missions have to take place to and from Lagrange points. All of known space is connected by the interstellar linkages formed between Lagrange jump points. But the Toleman points in Alpha Centauri space are more crucial than the rest, lying at the very center of the known space network. You should proceed at best speed to the Toleman point A. My information suggests some kind of attack on the point itself is imminent. But as to what that attack involves, your guess is as good as mine. Just in case, we have a 10-ship backup squadron on standby if you FTL for assistance. This just sounds better and better. Your mission orders are patrol the target area and report back. If you engage any hostiles, call in the backup fleet. This is Admiral Brett terminating this briefing document. Well, you heard the man. Let's scan for hostiles. Scanning now. Found one. Low thermal trace, 2,000 Ks. Probably a tug. Puffin class. Okay, let's move to engage. Sir? Did we call for backup? The jump point sensor's going crazy. I'm getting a number of major contacts. FTO for backup. Now! All ships. Dreadnought has signaled for assistance. Let's move it, people. Sir? If that's what I think it is... They're trying to block the point. FTO the backup squadron. Send an abort code. Too late. Hell. If those ships come out of jump space into a blocked point, we are gonna see those ships smeared all over the... Attack pattern B3. No, no, climb! That's it. Old position here. Match velocities with the destroyer. Now! Full burn for the blocker!
And so that is the story of how Jefferson Clay died. He gave up his life to save more than 1,500 of his fellow officers. He was the greatest hero in the history of space warfare, a role model, a legend. He made a difference by inspiring a whole generation of young officers. But of course it wasn't until five years later that Clay got the chance to figure out what was really going on. I still get chills, you guys. Chills! Still, to this day, still getting chills. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's good. Okay, gets you in the mood, man. Now, that, that, this game came out the same year as the movie uh, Lost in Space. I think that movie, that intro movie, better. Uh... Uh, better. Yes. So, uh, that was the intro movie. Now we're going to play a bit of the game. We're going to jump into the game itself. Uh, so I've got keyboard thing here. A lot of keys for this game. Just a smidge there, just a smidge. All right. Come on, man. There we go. All right. So uh, there are two ways to play this game. Excuse me. Instant action, which is just wave after wave of ships, and the uh, the main story. So we are going to start with me. And basically, there uh, are a couple ways to start everything. There's the um, the training missions which we're going to do and then this is where the story starts this salvage thing here so let's start there I haven't done this in a while probably gonna be really rusty oh I haven't played this game in this ages. is a training exam in piloting dreadnought class corvettes all prospective officers should pass this exam before entering active service your performance will be monitored and scored the exam will test your ability to control the ship. You will be maneuvering using thrusters only. On screen is a Type 2 navigation buoy. Mm -hmm. We call them rings. <laughs> your objective is to fly the ship along a course made up from a series of such rings. To complete the course, you must fly through the center of each and every ring in turn. Colliding with the ring will result in damage to your vessel. The total time taken to complete the course will be measured, and the faster you complete it, the more you will score. You may resit this exam at any time in order to improve your score. Such a trope, you guys. Alright. Okay, the objective of this exam is to pass through the center of all the rings in the course in the shortest possible time. The timer starts when you pass through the first one. Any questions? What if I miss a ring? You have to pass through all the rings to complete the course. You can't mess around with the order, but I, I would try to do them in the order that they come. Okay, here we go. You can't go full speed because you need maneuverability because this game is full Newtonian. Okay, the timer is running. So you gotta go, you gotta go about halfway, three quarters speed if you want to maintain maneuverability as well as get through all the rings in a solid time frame.
Thankfully, they're no, they're they're low, they're in order, so you don't have to fiddle with targeting or anything right now. I think I'm doing this right. I hope I'm doing this right. I hope I'm doing this right. That's halfway. Yeah, I still got like. I haven't done this in a while, so I am feeling really rusty right now. I know this is a, I know this is a real trope, but it, it it's a good trope. It's a good trope because it does get you. Uh, it does get you. I don't know why I like to orient myself like this, but it's a good trope in that it does get give you a feel for the ships that you're flying. So. I mean, it works. I think... I don't remember if, uh... X-Wing was the first game that did this, but it's the first game I remember that did this sort of ring course thing. I don't think it was in, like, the Wing Commander games or, like, Mantis or anything, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure... Oh, God. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure it was X-Wing. Yeah, I'm not making it. Crap! Come on, Brian. I've done this before. I'm gonna have to go a little faster through each thing then. You might have to watch me do this again. Yeah, didn't make it. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. I guess they. I guess when I line up, just go full speed and then slow down once you get close enough so you can turn. Okay, one more to go. Yeah, and I failed. Ah, I failed. See, the time ran out. That's a weird angle to come through this one. I'm about to do this again. See, I told you guys I was rusty. Ooh. Superb. That's a new course record. It is? Oh, okay. Uh, sure. I guess I did it. All right. Now the Nav Advance tells you all about, I think, autopilots and LDS. I guess I would have gotten a higher score if uh, I did it within the time frame, I guess. This exam will establish your ability to control a Dreadnought class Corvette using autopilots, the ship's linear displacement drive, LDS, and capsule drive. During the flight, you will be accompanied by an instructor pilot in another Corvette. You should listen to his spoken instructions and you should follow them to the letter. On completing the course, your instructor pilot will score your performance. Here we go. Dreadnought, this is your instructor pilot. You are currently docked to the Salt Lake Navy facility in Earth space. I'd like you to use undock to separate from the station. Uh-oh. Oh, no! The game crashed, you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll tell you, getting these... Getting these late 90s... Getting these late 90s games to, uh... 
to work properly in more modern OSs is, is yeah, I, I know, I know. Dreadnought, this is your instructor pilot. You are currently docked to the Salt Lake Navy facility in Earth space. I'd like you to use undock to separate from the station.
an actual button to switch the roll and yaw axis, which I guess I hit somehow. Formation autopilot with the instructor. Autopilots are a mainstay of this game. You really need them. I'm not even kidding. You really need them. Stations I was cycling through. Captain, navigator. Okay. I'm coming out of LDS near the jump point. See if you can drop out near to my location. Okay, we should now jump back to Earth L5 and we got with Salt Lake. That will conclude the exercise. Don't crash on me again. You crashed on me again. Oh, you son of a gun. You crashed on me again. It did. It crashed on me again. I don't want to go through that mission again. I don't want to have to go through that mission again. But I might have to. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have to. You know what? All right. Um, 
I was going to show you all the other missions, the training missions and whatnot. There are missions for net. There are missions for. Um, there are missions for um, not only navigation but weapons, all sorts of stuff, and uh, they were going to be good for me too because I haven't played this in a while. But we're going to skip all that now because it keeps crashing, and we're going to start the next entry. We're going to start with the salvage mission that starts the story. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching the intro and some of the training. There's more, but it keeps crashing on me. I don't know if it's going to crash in full screen mode, but again, this thing stirs like a bitch in full screen mode on OBS. Not on my screen. It works great just for me, but on OBS, it's like, uh, 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 and I don't want you guys to watch that. So we're going to try, keep trying to do it in a window here. Hopefully it won't keep crashing, and we'll see you for the next entry. Thanks for watching, y'all.